Hi, I'm Joni Hilton, your YouTube mom. Today I'm going to show you 10 fast boredom busters. These are great ideas for kids. And whether it's the end of summer and everybody's fidgety because they're going to go back to school but they haven't gone back yet, or whether they're just home because they're sick, or whatever, sometimes kids get restless and want something fun to do. Get out a pen and pencil. These are 10 really easy things you can do right around your home that will entertain children and teenagers and even adults. Okay, the first one I love. It's camp at home. And this just shows that you can make s'mores in your microwave. All you do is this. You take a sheet or a blanket, throw it over a couple of chairs or even a table, and that's your tent. And you throw some pillows inside to be nice and comfy. You make s'mores in your microwave, and you sing camp songs. You do whatever you want as if you're out in the woods, but you're at home, and it's fun. And it, kids love to climb under a little teepee or a tent that they've made with a blanket like that. Now here's another fun one. This one I call the Wacky Olympics, and I'm only going to show you one thing, and uh, I guess I'll do the dime. It's contests where you, you compete to see, for example, who can keep a coin spinning longest. So there's one. Uh, another thing you could do with your Wacky Olympics is even like take take a marshmallow and see who can balance a marshmallow on their nose for the longest time. Who can jump the farthest backward? Who can hula hoop the longest? Crazy events like that. Wacky Olympic events that anyone could win. And then the winner stands upon a chair and you present a medal that you can make out of paper or whatever. And everybody has to sing that person's favorite song. So it's really fun to have a family Wacky Olympics and it gives everybody a chance to win something. Maybe blowing the biggest bubblegum bubble. <laughs> anyway, that's a really fun one, and the kids can spend a lot of time even just writing down all the events they want to have. Even that takes some time. This one's fun if the weather's hot, and it's an evaporation race. Everybody gets an ice cube, hopefully one that's not stuck to another. You go outside, and you just put it on the ground or on the sidewalk, and then you see whose ice cube melts the fastest or another variation on that is you can find out how long it takes. Have everybody put in a guess. How long will it take that ice cube to melt? Someone will say three minutes, someone will say 15 minutes, someone will say four seconds, whatever it is, and see who comes the closest. Now this is a fun one also for hot weather, and it's called Whipped Cream Wars. We used to do this in our family a lot. I would give each child, we have four kids, I'd give each one a can of whipped cream. And you go outside in your swimsuits and you take off the top and you shake it up and then you spray each other. And you run and you scream and you're spraying and you see who you can get to be the most covered with whipped cream. And of course at the end you hose off everybody. It's a great way to cool off. It's great summertime fun and it takes a lot of time and it doesn't cost very much. This is a really clever thing that kids like to do and it's a treasure hunt. So you let's say you put this under their pillow and in the morning they read, never can I tell a lie. The next clue is where things get dry and they think, things get dry. They run to the dryer, right? And inside the dryer door you've taped the next clue. Keep on going, do not quit, look beneath a place you sit. And they think, boy, where do I sit in a lot of places? They go to the sofa, and finally underneath the chair they sit on in at dinner time is where the next clue is. And you keep going all around the house. Now, a variation on this is the kids make the clue for you. At the end, of course, you find a cookie, a toy, some little prize. But little kids like it if you make up the rhymes, of course, if they're too little to do it. But older kids get a kick out of making these rhyming clues and making them really tough to see if you can figure out where the next clue will be. And you can make it 10 clues long if you want. It's a lot of fun and a great way to use a whole afternoon. This one we always did with our kids. This is called the Mr. Smiley Store and the Mr. Smiley Jar, even though it's a mug. And all you do with this doesn't have to be a smiley one. It can be anything you want a container. And you have the kids every single day be looking for things their siblings did. So it might say, Nicole helped me wash dishes. It might say, Richie read me a story. Or whatever it is, when, when you catch your, your brother or sister doing something nice, you write it down, you fold it up, and you put it in the mug. And at the end of the week, or month, however you decide to do it, you draw out one of the slips and you say, oh, 
Brandon helped me make my bed. Brandon wins this week. Obviously, the more slips have your name on them, the more likely you are to win. And then you go to the smiley store where you have put objects that are age appropriate and interesting to your age children, stickers, toys, whatever it is, and they can choose something from the smiley store for having done so many good deeds. Now this one is to remind me to tell you, <laughs> let your kids make a movie. This can be using their cell phones or this could be using your home camera, but let kids sit down and write a script, come up with a story, it could be something funny, it could be something with sound effects, and then they collect costumes, they do the makeup, they can make the whole movie. This can take a week. <laughs> this is a super boredom buster, and then it's fun to watch it. Might even be fun to make copies for grandparents for holiday gifts, just a thought. This is a fun outdoorsy one. Now what I'm showing you is is the bare bones, literally, of what this project is. I took these out of a big fairy garden I have outside that's in a, a flower pot. But you could use a shoebox, or in this case, a pie tin. You put dirt in, in it, you gather little tiny things that a fairy might want. You can even make or buy a little fairy house, put some tiny miniature plants in there, make a little walkway with some stones or pebbles, and let kids make a fairy garden. It's really whimsical and fun and great in the garden. This is the ninth one, and it's to have a taste test. These are different kinds of popcorn, so you take maybe five or six brands, you pop them up, you could do this with granola bars, you can do it with soda pop, with a cookie that you buy, whatever thing you want to use to do a taste test. Blindfold your kids, line up five or six choices and let everybody taste and sample each thing and vote on which one was the best. It's a fun thing to run a taste test. And the last idea, someone gave me this, a good friend, and we've all seen these beautiful, beautiful signs that depict our family name, or it could even be your child's first name. In this case, of course, it says Hilton. And what you do is you go around, it could be anywhere, a park, a city area, your home, and you look for things that are in the right shape for your letters. And you can see on mine, of course, it spells H-I-L-T-O-N. But these things could be found in window panes, twigs, uh, anything, anything, whatever shape you need to find, you can find and photograph, in this case black and white, and make a family name board using your children's photography of the letters. It's just a great project and can take hours, hours of fun. So I'm Joni Hilton, your YouTube mom. I'm so glad you watched. Hey, go to my website. You are going to see so much on there books to buy, <laughs> all kinds of things, blogs to read. Anyway, my website is the same as my name, jonihilton.com. So check it out and be sure and tell your friends to subscribe and we'll see you next time.